It's a real privilege and honor for me to be here before this committee. It wasn't uh, that long ago that I sat here also with many of you that are still currently serving on this committee. Um, at that time, uh, we were in the minority, uh, but we continue uh, to see the success and progress of, of what this particular committee has been able to accomplish. So I'm very proud this day to be here representing the Obama administration as the cabinet member representing the Labor Department. Uh, it's wonderful to see so many good friends that are here, uh, and I know that we've had time to share with some of you that have come by or called our offices for assistance. We want to continue to let you know that our open door policy is made available to everyone, and I truly mean that. Uh, we are about trying to provide the best assistance that we can to restore faith and respect and dignity in the Department of Labor. And it's a pleasure to be able to talk to you about some of the things that we've been doing. And yes, uh, uh, Ranking Member uh, Klein, I agree with you wholeheartedly, as our President has said in his State of the Union message, and even uh, long before uh, I was on board uh, as a Cabinet member, uh, Jobs uh, Recovery Act funding to help restore jobs and try to provide a stimulus for our economy to spur growth uh, for our economy is something that is very, very keenfully uh, a part of our everyday agenda. That's something that I think about every single day. And while uh, the President and the Congress an answered that urgent call last year, uh, beginning in February with the passage of the American Reinvestment Recovery Act, I do have to say that it has made a difference. And I can tell you that because personally in my travels across this country, I've been able to see how that money has been implemented, where it has hit, and where uh, we continue to see some positive outcomes. While we know that this uh, recovery is one that, is, that has hit so many people. It is something that I think many of us have not seen in our, in our lifetime. Uh, we know that we will not lose our focus on making sure that our first priority is getting people back to work. Uh, in my community, uh, where I was a, a recent member in the House, uh, three years before the official recovery, we saw uh, downsizing of jobs, we saw a tremendous unemployment increases in communities of color, and we could tell that there was something amiss in our communities, and I knew that that was something that had to be addressed at that time. However, it took a while for us to get here now. And I just want to tell you that um, when, we look at, when we look at what has happened over the course of this last year, uh, when the President took office in January, we were losing well over 700,000 jobs, 700, 600,000 uh, every, every month thereafter. But I can tell you now, each and every month, Part of my responsibility is to report on those unemployment figures. While I'm not happy and satisfied that we continue to see job loss, I will tell you that I quite frankly am pleased to see that we've been able at least to stabilize, uh, stabilize that job loss. So last month in December, our report was a, a job loss of 85,000 jobs. That's still not good enough. President and I strongly believe that we have to continue to put forward every single effort that we can to make sure that we that we work diligently to, to provide a safety net for those people who continue to lose their jobs and those people that are running out of their current benefits, unemployment insurance benefits, COBRA benefits, that we continue to provide that extension. First and foremost, the Recovery Act was to provide a safety, a security for those people who lost their jobs. So that immediately had to take place with the Recovery Act. And I want to thank all of the members that supported an affirmation of that plan that the President had to provide that funding. The bulk of that money went through the Department of Labor. And, and perhaps your communities may not um, have taken as much note because people were applying for, uh, for their uh, unemployment insurance benefits. In fact, they even got an additional $25 in that, uh, in that plan as well. And you may ask yourself, $25 may not sound like a lot, but to people in areas where that means a difference between, be, between paying for the electricity bill and rent and food on the table in these days, that says a whole lot. That money stays in the community and it does have an impact after it is released back into the neighborhoods. I would say that that it was a very good decision on the part of the Congress to be able to move uh, that agenda forward to make sure that we had those security systems in place. The President went a little bit further, though. He also provided assistance for those people who lost their jobs and lost their health benefits. So COBRA, extent, an extension was put into place. So 65% of the cost of health care was also provided for those people that lost their health care. That, in many, in many ways, has come to, uh, I think, be very significant for people who have lost their jobs. And we know that that's something that continues to be a strong priority for this administration. Talking about green jobs, 
Yes, that is something that I worked on as a House member here and something that the President and many members of the House and the Senate strongly believe in, that job creation and growth really means a reinvestment and retooling of our manufacturing and industrial base. And it really means uh, looking at new opportunities, retraining those workers who lost their jobs in the automobile industry, electrical workers, plumbers, pipe fitters, that may now need to take a, a different approach into, in terms of what other job careers are available. And potentially, my understanding through the reports and facts that I have seen, these jobs will provide any more, uh, anywhere from 10 to 20 percent more in terms of wages. And of course, we want good paying jobs. We want secure jobs that are also going to provide safety and protection in the workplace. So along with our whole effort to create, uh, try to create new uh, job opportunities and to build up our workforce, um, I think that uh, we are going a step further in our enforcement practices to make sure that the department actually focuses in on the safety and protection of workers. And uh, Chairman Miller, you, you said very pointedly that in previous years the uh, Department of Labor would not take serious many of the calls that came in to our department regarding wage and hour theft. That is a big priority for this administration. The President and I strongly believe that one way of combating that is by making sure that we have more troops on the ground, that we have investigators that are going to comply and know what those rules are and answer those questions and reply and do the best preparation we can to service the public. That is what our, uh, our, our job should be. Um, I want to also touch on something else that we're, we're focusing in on. We talk about job creation. I don't want to just focus in on green jobs because that's where, yes, a bulk of the, the funds have gone for job creation and in different pathways. One is targeting uh, partnerships with apprenticeship programs, with community colleges, and, and with small businesses. And of course, every opportunity that's made available to provide grants will always be to include small businesses. We can't create jobs without the input at the local ground level in terms of what the local businesses aspire for us to focus in on. So we basically look from the, from the bottom up in terms of what those locales and regions are looking for. That's what I have asked my uh, new administration, my, my, uh, my uh, leadership in the employment training program to do, to focus in on making sure that we are really addressing the needs of the local people that really have a better sense of how these programs should be funded. Um, I also want to mention that uh, in, the coming, in the coming weeks, we will also be awarding $220 million of grants in uh, health care careers and also in IT and broadband expansion. And what I'd like to say there is we know from evidence in the last year that one job creator that we know is, is sure to continue is going to be in the healthcare arena. That number of jobs that has grown over the past year uh, is well above 600,000, and it's going to continue to grow. And as the president moves forward in his efforts to reform health care, there's going to be more capacity to grow in these different job areas. So I see the demand continuing to grow as we move into IT. That's another big issue area I think that all of us can share in, that we need to make sure that we have a very competitive workforce, that we're training for the right skills, and that we make the most uh, opportunities available for everyone. What I'm really happy to report is that for so many people, dislocated workers, for also uh, unemployed youth, for high school dropouts, for individuals of, of different communities and areas suffering from high unemployment and auto workers have been the target of much of the grants that we have been awarding in the past uh, three, uh, three, three and four weeks. And I have to tell you that um, the kinds of coalitions that I see occurring. And one example I want to share with you is in Florida. Uh, Brovard County Minority Builder Coalition partnered with the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, Local 729, to extend green job training opportunities. And I can go on and on and on about what I've seen in terms of people on the ground actually getting enrolled in these programs, changing careers even because they felt the career that they had was at a dead end. And now they see a potential of getting into a whole new, perhaps green job or even one in the, in the uh, healthcare arena that provides them with a career path, not just a job that's short term, but a potential to actually move up the ladder. So we're really looking here at investments that are not just about getting out of the recovery, but making a systemic change in our entire infrastructure. And it's about creating good paying jobs, middle class jobs that will put people back in that position that we have lost over the last 
last, over the last decade. I also want to mention that we've also provided grants in Minnesota. Honeywell and two Chamber of Commerce has joined with the United Steelworkers to train workers there. Uh, we also provided assistance for women, women in non-traditional roles in Long Beach, California. Through the Women's Bureau, we provided a grant for women in non-traditional roles in green curriculum and also in pre-apprenticeship programs. This is an area that we have to continually focus in on. While we believe that more women are participating in the workforce, their earning capacity has not kept at the same rate uh, or equivalent to their male counterparts. And that's something that we have to address. We can do it by working together, by providing women with those tools that are necessary. Also, I would like to say that um, we can't lose sight of the enormous uh, contributions that our vet veterans have made, in particular those that are coming home from Iraq and Afghanistan. Many young men and women who perhaps their first job was uh, signing up for the military and may not have the appropriate skill and training sets that might make them marketable right away. We are doing everything we can through our vets department to help provide assistance, uh, to make sure that we can give them counseling, identifying any job opportunities, and assistance for those that may need it and their families. We're also talking about homeless veterans and women homeless veterans. That is one area that I know in the past has not been addressed adequately and we're looking to see a more uh, proactive uh, agency uh, now and I'm very delighted that uh, all of my assistant secretaries in these different divisions that are now taking up the mantle to see that we really that we really dig deep into our programs cut out inefficiencies and fat and make sure that we make these dollars extend in every way that we possibly can. And I want to just turn very quickly to something that the President said and he made clear in his State of the Union address. And again, he did underscore job creation. Jobs, jobs, jobs. And when he talks about jobs, I talk about good jobs, secure jobs, jobs that put people back in the middle class. He's talking about uh, asking the Congress to pass a jobs bill that will include investments in small businesses, that include tax credits to hire new workers and raise their wages, investments in our infrastructure, in road, bridge, rail, and port projects. I just happened to be last week in Ohio where we issued a $400 million grant for high-speed rail that will create a tremendous number of jobs for the next couple of years. And you can see where other states are joining in efforts collectively to see how there can be a seamless system of transportation for different regions in our country. So I was delighted to be a part of that, even though that funding doesn't come directly out of my budget. But again, we are concerned about the workforce and who is adequately trained for those jobs, that they, that they have the best qualified uh, employees and that we have every opportunity to make sure that businesses are partners in that, in that job creation. Um, the last thing I would like to say uh, to you is one of the most important things that we can do is focus in on uh, our enforcement of our laws, our current laws that are on the books. And as was said by our, our chairman here, um, having someone who takes serious the enforcement uh, of our laws in wage and hour and OSHA, providing for assistance uh, for those individuals that, that are robbed uh, because of their wages or are not paid overtime or are not given appropriate attention. Everyone deserves to have someone uh, fighting for them. If they have put in a hard day's work, if they go into work, they should be able to come home safe at night. I am very troubled uh, with many of the things that, that, uh, that I have seen occur in the, in the past few years with respect to minors. The fact that we do have some issue areas there that we have to address. And that is a problem that I want to work with you. Many of you here have proposed legislation and have interests there uh, because of the districts that you represent. It's something that I take very seriously. Job safety and protection for those workers and their families is equally important to me. Um, I want to tell you that in OSHA, uh, j so far, uh, we have been able to conduct 2,000 inspections in the workplace when we received our Recovery Act money. That allowed me to build up our staff to provide more uh, investigators in the field, and I can tell you that we are turning things around at the Department of Labor. Things are slow, as the President has said before to me and many members of his cabinet. It's like moving uh, uh, a, a, a giant uh, how could I say, a Navy fleet, to get them to turn a corner, 
takes a tremendous amount of energy and focus. And I can tell you that we are moving every single day. Our rudders are on. And we want to see progress as badly as we know that the public wants to see more job creation and recovery of our economy. I feel very confident that we're going to be able to see this through. One last item. I know that many of you here are very focused on the WIA, the reauthorization of the WIA Act. That's something that from day one, when I got to the Department of Labor, I made it a point to underscore with my staff that we would be engaged in every way we can. So far, we have made ourselves available to the Senate committees that have jurisdiction. We're there to provide technical assistance. We want to do that with members that are here in the House that are also going to be engaging in uh, the reauthorization. The President wants to, wants to let you know that what we are looking for in the reauthorization of the Workforce Investment Act will include streamlining of service delivery, one-stop shopping for high-quality services, engaging employers on a regional and sectoral basis, improving accountability, and promoting innovation. These are all the major goals that we will strive to include as we go through the reauthorization of WIA. Uh, with that, Mr. Chairman uh, and Ranking Member, I am happy to answer any questions.